Hi, everybody. I'm Vivian White. I'm from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific in San Francisco, California. Uh, I'm here today with Brian Cruz and Rosa Duran. <coughs> I'm saying your name completely wrong, Rosa. Um, Rosa. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Rosa, but uh, it's not completely like she said. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we are having a follow-up education webinar to a really... A fantastic webinar that we had just uh, a couple weeks ago on the eclipse that's going to be passing through the US on August 21st 2017 and the webinar that we had a few weeks ago we'll link to it here in the comments um, the webinar was all about the mega movie project where we're going to be uh, taking pictures across a long swath of totality the, the eclipse comes across the US from the West Coast to the East Coast. Um, and there's about an hour and a half that it takes to get across. And we will uh, be taking it in any place that's clear, taking pictures in any place that's clear along the path of totality. So the webinar is about that, but also about eclipses in general. So you should definitely check it out if you haven't had a chance. Um, and today I'm very excited to introduce Brian Cruz, who has wears many, many hats. Um, at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific and beyond. And he is our, the director of formal education here. He's been a classroom teacher for many years and he runs our formal education programs. And one of the things that he has done recently with the help of others, Rommel and someone else I can't remember, they um, took an activity that was meant for amateur astronomers um, it's an eclipse activity and you're about to see it. They took this activity and they modified it for use in the classroom and it was just written up in the US has a publication put out by the National Science Teachers Association called Science Scope um, and it was just written up in there in the latest edition of that so um, we can put a link to that as well. But Brian's going to give you the overview today of how to do it in your classroom. Uh, and there will be links all the way through so you can see uh, where to find all the materials, where to find the write-ups and things like that. So with that, I think I'll turn it over to Brian. Okay, well, thank you, Vivian and, and, and Rosa. Um, so I'm very excited to uh, be here with everyone today. And um, so the, uh, our other co-author on, on the article was Ronald Herman, who is also at Towson University. And we also put together, and, and we'll have some links at the, at the very end, and Vivian will put them into the chat window uh, for people. One of the other things is that uh, we have a publication called the Universe of the Classroom that's on the uh, Astronomical Society of the Pacific's website. And so we've actually gone through and put together a whole sequence of activities that are developmental in nature um, that get you up to the point of being able to use this uh, Eclipse model. And so we're going to kind of uh, leave all that introductory stuff uh, aside and just kind of focus in on just uh, using the model a little bit. And so this is just a really general overview um, for those of you who might uh, find yourself in the San Francisco Bay Area in about two weeks. We're going to be doing a full workshop on Saturday, February 18th here in our offices, um, a three and a half hour workshop all about doing uh, activities having to do with uh, an in-depth understanding of eclipses. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And let me share my, uh, um, if I can find it. And let me make this big. And uh, let's see, are you seeing, uh, hopefully, um, the main screen and not the presenter view? So, we are seeing the main screen. I just want to give people a heads up that at the top of the screen, there are some view options. If you don't want it to take up your whole screen, um, you should be able to see all of us, but also the, um, the presentation as well. Okay, great. Thank you. So what we're doing here is we're going to take a look at, uh, um, at a three-dimensional model for working with eclipses and exploring lunar and solar eclipses, both with this model. And so we developed this here at the uh, ASB for the NASA Night Sky Network. And so this is, uh, as Vivian mentioned, um, we're very, very busy with uh, getting ready for this summer's total solar eclipse. And so here's a nice map 
uh, as Vivian alluded to, that it goes from coast to coast, but only in this narrow, about 60 mile wide, or I guess that would be uh, what that would be about, um, I need to do the conversion here, about 36, uh, no more than that, about 100 kilometers uh, wide. I went the wrong direction there with the, with the conversion. Um, but everyone in, in North America is going to have an opportunity to see at least a partial eclipse. And this will be true for Canada as, and Mexico, as well as the United States. And so we're very excited about this, particularly because this is the first total solar eclipse that struck the mainland uh, United States since February 1979 which uh, I did not see, but I was in, um, because where I was in eastern Washington, it was snowing at the time. And so it got really, really dark for several minutes, um, but we didn't actually see the eclipse. And so I'm very excited about seeing this one this coming summer. Now, this is one of, one of the things, too, is that this eclipse is taking place in the morning um, for uh, most of the country, and then in the early afternoon for uh, the eastern part of the country during school hours. And so students are going to have a great opportunity um, for those schools that are in session. About two-thirds of the, of the schools in the United States are going to be in session that day. So basically, this is what people, if they're on the path of totality, would see this. Hopefully, all of you have had a chance to see an eclipse. If you haven't, uh, hopefully you will at some point in the future. If you're not in that 100 kilometer wide swath, then you might see something like this. Anywhere from, you know, this is probably, uh, if you go way down into southern Florida, you might see this. If you go way up to Maine, you see something like this. And then the closer you get to the path of totality, the closer to, total, the closer to total eclipse that you actually see. Sometimes you see an eclipse that looks like this. And so in 2012, we had one of these uh, pass over uh, California. And uh, this is an annular eclipse where the moon was just a little bit further away in its orbit. Since uh, all orbiting bodies are, their orbits are elliptical. And so at this particular time, the moon was just a little bit further away. And so it didn't quite cover the entire solar disk. And so we saw an annular eclipse. The opposite of that, of course, are lunar eclipses. And so here's the, the San Francisco Bay Bridge with a lunar eclipse over it. And here's another one that was taken by a good friend of ours who works at NASA Ames Research Center uh, doing a lot of things. He also does a lot of uh, um, uh, astrophotography. And so this is actually a total lunar eclipse. And just that the moon is very, very close to the edge of the shadow. And so it's a little bit brighter on the one side. So one of the things that ends up happening, and this happens with students, this happens with other people, there's lots of questions that go on having to do with eclipses. And so one of the things that we talk about here is anchoring phenomena and driving questions towards students being able to understand this. And so here's a really interesting phenomena. The sun turns dark or it's partly covered. And then we have a lot of interesting questions that students and other people can come up with. And our model that we're gonna show here in a couple minutes uh, will help to answer and lead into some investigations about these questions. Likewise, during a lunar eclipse, we might have this sort of a phenomena, the moon turns dark or a blood red color. And so again, we have a number of questions that we could answer or ask about this and the people can investigate and try to come up with answers using the model. And so we will post uh, so that you don't have to try to scribble all these down. We will be posting the, uh, uh, this PowerPoint someplace and uh, Vivian will give us a, uh, I think a link uh, for where that'll be a little bit later. So one of the things that uh, is, you know, sometimes we wonder, well, where is the moon right now? What's the moon look like today? And so there's actually ways to find this out. And so the U.S. Naval Observatory has an astronomical applications department where you can get sun and moon data for any day. And so if you're going to be working with people, uh, you could look it up on here and type in your location, and you could find out whether or not the moon is going to be up at that particular time. It turns out that the moon is going to rise in about an hour and a half, a little bit over an hour from here. Um, here in San Francisco. And so an hour from now, we could go outside and look towards the east 
and we would see the moon coming up and looking kind of like this. Which is, you know, and that's a surprising thing for many people that, what do you mean, the moon during the day? That's kind of a misconception that a lot of people have, is that you can't see the moon during the day. So this is what we would see starting about an hour from now. And so this might remind us that the moon does go through a series of phases, which has been kind of a, a staple of some of the activities where we can go outside with what we call these moon balls, or these styrofoam balls, and recreate the sequence of lunar phases using these. And this would be part of the investigation that we do prior to using this model, because it, it kind of builds on, on this activity to have a fuller understanding of what's going on with lunar and solar eclipses. And so another important thing is that when the moon's up, you could actually measure it. And so here we have a group of teachers that are holding out their fingers and they're measuring the moon. And so it turns out that the moon is about half a degree, which is about half of your, your small finger or your pinky. And so you could actually measure this. And, um, and so this is a, an important aspect of understanding why lunar and solar eclipses happen the way that they do. Which might bring up the question, well, how big is the moon compared to the Earth? And so this is an important thing to be able to understand. And it turns out that, and here we're using miles, um, here in the United States, we're still stuck in the dark ages, and people are still familiar with this. Um, but sometimes uh, the numbers uh, work out a little bit to our favor. And so just you have to humor us for uh, staying, you know, back in uh, uh ancient history, so to speak here. So it turns out that the moon is about one quarter the diameter of Earth diameter. And so in other words, you could fit four moons side by side across the Earth. Well, how far away is the Earth from the moon? And so this is another thing that can help us to understand about eclipses and why it is that we see what we see. And so it turns out, and this diagram is, or this image is not to scale, but the, if you go through and calculate this, it turns out that the moon is approximately 30 Earth diameters away from the Earth. And so if you could stack 30 Earths in between the Earth and the moon. And this is an important thing um, when we get to using our model. So one of the other things that um, kind of brings in here is that someone might say, well, gee, the sun is so much bigger than the moon. How come they look the same size during a solar eclipse? And so that's one of the things that makes the eclipses so cool for us because we can see the corona that the moon is almost the exact same size as the sun and it blocks out the disk and only allows the corona to be able to um, be evident. And so how come they look the same size? And so if you kind of um, think about this, and so here we've got um, the moon, you know, this is, uh, this is not invisible light. This is, uh, I'm not sure what light this is in the, the solar disk. And so if we all of a sudden illuminated the moon, then we would be able to see what's on the right side here. But it turns out that, you know, if the moon is one fourth the size of the earth, well, how big is the earth compared to the sun? And so here we've got the Earth compared to the Sun. You know, that's really, really small. And so the Moon is really, really small compared to the Sun. It turns out that the Sun's diameter is about 400 times larger than the Moon's. Wow, that's really big. But it also turns out that the Sun is 400 times further away. And so this combination of these um, just, you know, happenstance that ends up having the Sun and the Moon looking like they are the same size. So we take advantage of that. And so I'm going to, and so here we have a couple of teachers showing this model. And so I'm gonna turn off the, the screen share just for a couple of minutes here. And then we're gonna kind of, uh, you know, take a look at some other things. And so basically what we've done is we've taken this and we come up with, here we have the earth and here we have the moon. And so the moon is about, you could fit four of these aside. And so we'll just kind of say that, we're gonna say that the earth is one unit in diameter, which means that the moon is one quarter of a unit in diameter. 
And so now we've got this, we've put this together, and so we've conveniently put this, and so if the Earth is one unit in diameter, that means we have to put the Moon 30 units in diameter away. And so here we've got 30 Earths could fit in between. And so this is our basic model. And so when we do this, and so here behind me, I've got a nice screen, I've got a light over here, and so here's the other thing that you need is some sort of a light to act as your sun. And so I've got another one set up over there. Let me turn off this other light that really isn't doing that much. And one of the things that we want to do is we can actually make some eclipses. And so here you can almost see it. I've got some pictures to show you a little bit later that shows us a little bit clearer. But you can see that there might be a shadow on the big white screen. Now, there really isn't a big white screen out in space where you can see the shadow of this. And so sometimes things, we have to have something get in the way of the shadow. And so in this case, we've got the moon happens to get in the way of this shadow that's being cast by the Earth. And so when the moon does go into that shadow, then we have a lunar eclipse. Well, we could flip this around and we can think about you know, what's going on with the opposite effect. And so one of the challenges is that if we didn't have the screen behind us, it's really, really hard to figure out where these shadows are. And so we use the, the white screen to help us to align the shadows. That's really the only thing that we're using the white screen for is to align the shadows so that we could actually see what the eclipses look like. So that's our basic model. So let me go back to the slides here and then we'll have some a picture. Let's see, where did it go? Um, we've got this model and, uh, and so we, we use the screen in the background to help us to uh, align the shadows. And so here we have an example of a solar eclipse. And so there in the, in the left-hand picture, you could see us uh, with the two shadows, one for our Earth, one for our Moon. And then when we get it aligned, we can see the nice black dot on the Earth, which is the shadow of our model Moon, shining on or, or you know, obscuring the Sun for the people that are living in that particular place on the Earth. Kind of like this. And so here we have a photo from space of a solar eclipse and so we can see that big dark patch where that the moon shadow is obscuring the sun likewise if we turn this around we can use the shadow in the background to align this and then we can put the moon into the same shadow well one of the things that a lot of people wonder about is because we've gone through and we've uh, uh, decided that a lunar eclipse happens during full moons only, that solar eclipses happen during new moons only. And so people might ask the question, well, how come we, if we have a new moon every month, how come we don't have a solar eclipse every month? And so one of the things that uh, we, we can do is we can take a look at the patterns of eclipses, we can take a look at the patterns of lunar phases, and then use the same model for people to, this would be a more open-ended thing to do with uh, students in a classroom, um, to actually come up with a model that demonstrates why it is that the, um, we don't have a solar eclipse every month. And so it turns out that uh, the moon's plane, the moon uh, orbital plane is tilted to the orbital plane of the Earth going around the sun, and that little bit of a tilt makes it so that we only see eclipses a couple of times a year when the two planes, when the moon is at the intersection of the two planes, and that happens approximately twice a year. And so this is basically using this really cool model that was developed for, you know, just a really short demo to use for a much more extensive investigation in classrooms. And so, Again, you know, it'll help uh, everyone to be able to understand what's going on with this particular uh, phenomena this coming summer, help us understand why it is that only a few people uh, on Earth 
can see the total eclipse and why it is that other people see only a partial eclipse. So this model can help us to answer all kinds of questions about eclipses. And so here's some links for some more information. The Astronomical Society of the Pacific has a dedicated solar eclipse page. Uh, the NASA Night Sky Network also has a dedicated eclipse resource page. Here's a link to the Science Scope article. If you are an NSTA member, um, you can get the article for free. For anyone else, it's uh, 99 cents. Um, and then there's a link to the Universe in the Classroom, which is a, a lengthy article kind of going through all of the different uh, um, all of the different uh, um, activities leading up to using the eclipse model in the classroom. And so that's the end of uh, what I have. And so thank you very much for inviting me. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, send me a note or there's my email and there's my phone number. And so we can put this up in the chat window and um, we can make sure that those other links get up in the chat window. And so I want to say thank you very much. This has been a lot of fun. And I look forward to uh, seeing all of you uh, out there in totality uh, if you happen to make it here. I'll be in Eastern Oregon. And so uh, I look forward to seeing all of you at that point in the shadow of the moon. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian. This has been fabulous. Um, Rosa, did you have anything you want to say? I think you're on mute. Oh, good. There you go. Yeah, I have a lot to say. If, uh, I, do I have time. Do I have time for that? <laughs> we have about four minutes. <laughs> okay, four minutes. Oh, I cannot do everything in four minutes. Okay. Yeah. But uh, so I just can say that uh, um, observing a, a solar eclipse is an amazing phenomenon. Uh, to the totality is something that. Uh, you cannot uh, explain how you feel uh, to, to, to people when you are under, you know what you're going to see, you've seen pictures of that, you, you think you are ready for that, but uh, in fact uh, you are not, and uh, it's uh, something that is breathtaking. And I strongly advise, if you can, put that in your list of something to do in, in, in your life. And um, I also would like to say that uh, we are uh, producing translations to Portuguese to all the material, the, the pedagogical material that's being presented in these ASP GTTP webinars. And uh, those are going to uh, are being shared in the Galileo Teachers uh, webpage, and it's going to be shared with all the Portuguese speaking communities. So we are talking about millions of people that are going to have access uh, to that through our Portuguese language office of astronomy for development. But uh, so I will take my minutes to I will share my screen if that is okay. Uh, can I do that, Vivian? Yes, let's see. All you do on the bottom, it should say share. I know, screen. I know how to uh, yeah. just uh, yeah. choosing the one that I'm going to choose. Absolutely, okay, I'm, please do. Yeah. I'm going to share my whole screen. So uh, I just wanted to show you a few interesting things. So this one was showed uh, by by uh, Brian, uh, why we see only in, in some parts of the of the planet, but also there, when you are under a total eclipse, there are a series of phenomena, even a partial eclipse, that you can see, for instance, the projection of the shadow of the sun uh, coming from leaves in a tree, uh, where you realize that actually when you see the light of the sun uh, on, the, on, the, on the floor, what you see is millions of replicas of the sun that are composed all together on top of each other, and that's why you don't see like this. But when there's an eclipse, you, it's very evident what you are seeing. So this is a picture taken during a, an, an eclipse. And even a partial eclipse, you can see you can see this phenomenon. It's very unique. And um, another thing that uh, is very nice is uh, if you have uh, uh, those spoons that had, have holes in it. Actually, I, last the eclipse that I saw, I had the, uh, my, my sleeve had uh, some holes in it. And I just did like this uh, under the sun, and I saw several images of the solar eclipse as well. So this is something that you can you can even if you put your hand under the sun. I don't know the explanation explanation by heart. You see six fingers in your hand. So all of this is if you do this like Vivian is doing with her hand exactly the same thing. You can see the the, the reflection. Actually, when you are home and uh, your your shade is down. And you see that there are all rectangular holes in it, but you see a, a projection in the in the wall that is round. You're seeing the sun. So these are things that we don't notice every day. Um, I also um, 
would like to point you to the mysteryeclipse.com is one site that I use to know which are the eclipses that are coming and uh, uh, where can I see it, where are the path of, uh, path of uh, totality. There is a, a whole list with maps explaining to you the dates and the time and the best places and the duration of the eclipse. So you can, you know, plan your next uh, summer or winter trip uh, to, to follow one of those, preferably uh, with, uh, with us. We have uh, our Global Hands-On Universe meeting in 2017, taking place in Kentucky 21st of August, and uh, we hope to accompany the total eclipse. We have already a few rooms booked uh, for those who are interested to come, please contact us. Um, and um, I wanted to say uh, in, also that uh, you can download some images uh, from STO and uh, you can do your own activity using Salsa J, uh, where you make a movie of a solar eclipse taking place. I don't think I have time here to, to do that. Uh, I would like to share one, one, one last thing. Uh, let me see. Uh, Vivian, do you see Stellarium? Or you don't? Do you, can you see my Stellarium? Yes, I do now, yes. Okay, so with Stellarium, you can simulate what's going on with your students. You just go to the location window. You choose a place where you know the eclipse is taking place. I cho I've chosen Nebraska. You go, you, you use the date and time window. You choose the date and the time when, when the eclipse is taking place. And you find the sun, and then you can, you can uh, uh, move uh, the time. Uh, this is the, 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 the local time in Lisbon because my stellarium is set to Lisbon. So on 21 of August, in that particular place, we're almost close to totality. I couldn't find the, the, pl the place of totality, but it's almost, almost there. Uh, so we can see, we can simulate with stellarium what is going on. And uh, I'm going to do a very, a very, um, brave, uh, do a very brave thing here. I'm going to move uh, in Stellarium, I'm going to move to the moon and uh, I'm going to uh, find here Earth and uh, I'm going to hide the horizon and exactly, and there, there it is, you can e even simulate the shadow of the the shadow of the moon crossing the earth. Uh, you can simulate the place when the shadow is going to, to move. So you can see the shadow moving across uh, our planet. Uh, you, you see perfectly well the, the path of uh, totality. So these are a few tools that you can use with your students to sparkle their interest. Uh, Vivian, do I have time to show how to make a movie with Salsa J? Um, yeah, we might as well. Okay, that so that's really cool. I would like to you to make a movie with the stellarium of the moon going across the earth. Uh, with stellarium, uh, with Some other stellarium time. <laughs> yeah, with stellarium, you have to, to record uh, uh, with uh, an outside uh, program. You okay. can also do that with Celestia, but uh, it will take a, a little more time because I don't remember the comments to put myself on the moon. But uh, you can do that with Celestia, and with Celestia, you can make a movie. You wow. can also do that with Google Earth, where you can also make a movie. Right. But uh, so uh, let me see if I can do it uh, with uh, Salsa J. Let me just open the Salsa J here. While you're getting that ready, I just wanted to also mention that NASA will be live streaming the eclipse. So if you can't actually get all the way uh, across the ocean here, um, you are welcome to watch it uh, via live stream. NASA will be live streaming it. Google, Google Mega Movie should be live streaming it um, and, and many others. So the Exploratorium will be live streaming it. Um, Keep an eye, I will um, try and put some links in there when we get closer to the time about where you can find the live stream. So what I did was um, I went to STO uh, website. I downloaded some images of the uh, partial uh, solar eclipse. I couldn't find the, the specific dates and it was in a rush. I just remembered that I could do that. So I found a few. Uh, this is not a total eclipse, it's a partial eclipse and it's uh, using an uh, age alpha image of the sun from the STO. And I'm quickly making a movie. You just go to um, image, stack, and you select images to stack, it will put all the images together. And then I click image, stack, start animation. Well, actually image, stack, let me change the animation options 
to be a little bit more slowly. Wait, image stack animation options. Okay. Okay. So it's something nice that you can do with uh, with uh, your students. Uh, you can also measure things on the sun, but I think we've done that, right? Even the last time we talked about the sun, we used SalsaJ to do that, so. Yes, absolutely, that's great though. Here okay, so animation. I'm stopped sharing uh, the my screen. And so this is just a few inspiring things you can do with your students uh, to when you have a, a, a solar eclipse in your hands. That is wonderful. Thank another you. thing, another thing. Sorry, another thing that is also important is if you are in the totality, open up your ears because uh, when the the when the time is coming and the you you won't see completely completely dark. It's always a different dark than when you are under a starry sky. But you start seeing some stars out there and you see that the, all the animals go silent. They feel like, okay, it's getting night, which is something interesting. You also feel very, very clearly the drop in temperature, even if you are in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a partial eclipse. And actually, even if you are under a 99% totality, it's not the same as totality. It's yeah. different. It doesn't get uh, as dark or as cold. But uh, it's a phenomena that are interesting to observe when you are in a solar eclipse. Fabulous. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have clear skies for the eclipse, and I hope some of you get to make it over here. Um, do you know when the next one will be coming through Portugal? Is there one at all? I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. I have to yeah. check. In 2019, there will also be one um, in South America, in Chile and Argentina. No, um, uh, going through Chile. I know the summit. Um, 2019. Yeah, we yeah. have big plans for that. Yes. Right at sunset, I think. Right at sunset, yeah, yeah, definitely be looking to the well, west. I have to say the following, we live in a very, very small planet, you know, eclipses Whoa. happen very often. I mean, go there, go yeah. there if you can and observe it, you know. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. It's been really wonderful having you. Um, and Thank I you. hope, uh, feel free to share this with anyone you'd like, and um, we'll have another one next month. Um, we'll put the list of upcoming webinars and where to find all the past webinars on the um, when we post this video as well. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you very much, Vivian, for this Thank opportunity. You. It's a pleasure to work with you guys. You, it is with you as well. Thanks, guys. Bye.